Hello, my name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques, and this is Simpler, Using Machine Learning Algorithms in R. And so we're now in Chapter 5, we're in Lesson 3, and we're looking, we've been dealing with elastic net regression. And as you already are familiar with, elastic net regression is a combination of ridge and lasso regression in order to help to manage and to, you know, deal with the coefficients inside your actual model. And so now we're at the point where we're going to develop our model, the exciting part. So here we are, we're already inside R. And you know, lines one through three are things that should already be set up for you, but sometimes they're not. Now remember that we're not using the data set Vietnam I, we had to reduce it to the first 1,000 rows. Um, that was something that was discussed in a prior video. And so right here, if you can take a look at this, I hope you can see this. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. We have our actual code for our, our, our training of our model. Now, in this particular model right here in line 7 and 8, we're using the train function from the care package. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to put, we're trying to make our model, so this is with the ill days tilde dot. The dot means use all the variables. The data set that we're using is train, okay, and then the method we're using is GLM net. So inside the, the care package, they have a function called train, and the train has an argument called method, and it, it has its own GLM net function inside that. Now, the unique thing about this one is that it does need the matrices for dealing with the model. What we're trying to do right now, we're trying to set up the actual model that we're going to use in a few moments. And so for TR control, we're using control. Now, if you don't remember what the control was, we made this in the prior video. These are all the different uh, pieces of information inside it, uh, the characteristics that are inside it. And we also made it for the a grid, for the tuner grid uh, argument right here in line eight, if you will, right there. So for the grid, you remember that, whoops, excuse me. So now one thing I need to mention for you is that the reason that we said the alpha and the lambda is for one of the, for, for many many reasons. First of all, uh, now this is kind of funny, but when the alpha is set to zero, you know it's rich, and when you set it to one, it's set to uh, lasso. So a lot of these models we're not really too concerned about. But when it's in between at 0.5, that is when we are testing for some sort of an elastic net dot model. So now, what's happening here is that we set the alpha to these different uh, parameters at the, at the, in the dot alpha column here. Now, for the lambda, the practical reason for setting the lambda is that if we just let it do whatever, you know, we can have up to 900 models generated, perhaps. So, the, what I mean is this: when alpha is set to zero, well, the, the the machine has to figure out, okay, what should I set the lambda to do? And so, you know, the default value for the GLM, GLM net function is to set, uh, uh, um, excuse me, 100 models, and then it stops. So it would do 100 models when the alpha is set to zero. And then it would do a, another 100 models when the alpha is set to 0 0.5 or whatever, trying to find a way to, to manipulate that lambda to correspond with the alpha that you set. So by presetting both, you reduce the number of models that have to be generated, and you focus more on the cross-validation aspect of it. Now. So this is line seven to eight. I press control enter. And so let's just take a peek at this real quick. It's gonna run right now. This takes a few moments to actually run, you know, maybe about 30, 40 seconds or so to accomplish this task. And so like I was already saying is that, you know, we're trying to constrain that. So we're really only concerned about maybe three of these models. Uh, model number two, when the lambda is set to zero, lambda, uh, uh, model number five, when the lambda is set to 0.1, and then one more that it kind of skipped over it. Uh, lamb in, in model number eight, when it's set to point two, the, the lambda. Okay, so it looks like our results are done. Here are our results. Leave using um, 690 samples, 10 predictors, and so we have the leave went out cross validation. We talked about that. These are the the nine models we ran, I believe. And here is the RMSC, the R square for each model, and the mean absolute error. Now. At the bottom of it, it makes a recommendation. So in this particular instance, our final recommendation is for not an elastic net model, but actually for a ridge regression model right here. It says set the alpha to zero and set the lambda to 0 0.2. However, because we're learning about how to deal with elastic net, we're going to ignore that recommendation and focus more primarily on you setting the alpha to 0 0.5. That's what we're gonna do. Now, 
Now that we know the, the hyperparameter recommendations that come from the carrot package, we are ready to actually run our model using uh, the GeoManet function directly. So the first thing I have to do is I have to finish off a little bit of the data preparation here. So you can see I have to convert the, 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 the sex variable to, to a, a dummy variable using the model.matrix uh, function. We've done this before. So this is lines 11 and 12. And then you also know that it needs a matrices where you have two separate, where you, where you take your data frame and separate, separate into two different matrices. One that has the predictor variables in it and the other one that has the, end, the dependent variable in it. And so in line 14, we put all of the predictor variables into one matrix. We've done this before. Line 15, we put the dependent variable in its own matrix called days ill. And we do that as so. So now we're all set. We have our dummy variables taken care of. We have our two matrices. Again, if you're familiar with Python, you know how you have to separate the independent and dependent variables from each other when you're making many, many models in machine learning. And so now we can finally use our GL GLMNet function to make our actual um, model here. And so just so you can see this, you can see clearly that I've set my alpha to 0.5 because I want an elastic net model and I'll set my lambda to 0.2. So I do all this, I press control enter, it runs, it's very fast. Now I can take a look at the coefficients real quick to see, okay, what survived the battle, if you will. And so I use the coef function, uh, coef function, I put the name of the model, I give you the lambda that I want, the alpha that I want, I want the exact values, I even set the seed. All these things are done in line 20, and then in line 21, I get my values. So these are, the variables that survived the storm, if you will. Uh, Parvis, the log of the log of the health expenses, age, education, illness, and uh, actual days. So if you run this several times, yes, you will get different answers quite frequently. Um, these are pretty consistent with the text, it appears, almost exactly the same, but not quite. And so what we're gonna do now in the next video is we're going to take what we have here and we're going to put it inside, or I'm sorry, we're going to use it, the test data to see how well our model is doing. Now keep in mind that the, the, the strength of the model is relative to other models. Since we only have one model, we really can't tell you how strong or weak it is, but we're going to run all these uh, different metrics anyway so that you can get some experience with how this works. So in this particular video, we took a look at how to set up a model using elastic net so there are several things you have to do you have to keep in mind you first have to run your train model here that's how you're able to figure out the recommendation for the hyperparameters that is the purpose of the code in line seven and eight to determine the hyperparameters it's, it's kind of a pre-step to the actual development of the model now because we're using the GLM net function, there were several additional data preparation things we had to do. We had to make sure that the dummy variable, or I'm sorry, the factor variables were converted to dummies. We had to separate the independent variables from the dependent variables by putting them in separate matrices. And then we ran our model with our separate matrices and also with our hyperparameter recommendations from the caret package. The train function is what it's called. Finally, we were able to look at the actual coefficients after we trained our model, and we were able to use this information going forward to test our model in the next video. So, um, I hope this was useful for you, and I hope that this was you know, making sense as we continue our journey through these different regression algorithms. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. This is Using Machine Learning Algorithms in R. Thank you.